5,000 miles from the country he liberated and the nation he enslaved. Robert Mugabe was already a faded force when we conducted what would be his last interview. A virtual prisoner at his sprawling mansion, the infamous Blue Roof. But he was as defiant as ever. No, we weren't that bad in comparison to other countries. The jubilant crowds that celebrated the end of his reign didn't agree. He had led them to ruin. Long gone, the youthful hero of a freedom struggle that ended white rule in Rhodesia and founded a new nation with a new name. But Zimbabwe's new leader was ruthless from the start. He sent his army to slaughter opponents. At least 20,000 died. As long as dissidents come from a particular area, we will send troops to that area. Nor did racial reconciliation last. He drove white farmers from the land and handed it to political cronies. But as the farms burnt, Zimbabwe starved. An era of hyperinflation and empty shelves. His opponents took a beating, but Mugabe had a scapegoat. We are not a British colony. You must know that. Tell him again. Tell him again. We are not a British colony. What has the British to do with Zimbabwe? Who are you? You bloody idiots. But the grinding poverty saw his people flee in their tens of thousands. Also forced into exile, the Zimbabwean cricketers who wore black armbands to mourn the death of democracy. His legacy is, is that of suffering. They've, the youth militia that he abused and used um, during the farm invasions, the so-called war veterans, a lot of lives destroyed. In the end, he was ousted by his protege and rival, Emerson Manangagwa, who paid this tribute tonight. Comrade Mugabe bequeaths a rich and indelible legacy of tenacious adherence to principle on the collective rights of Africa and Africans in general. But from the bloodshed in Zimbabwe's first post-Mugabe election to the crackdown and protesters made desperate by unemployment and soaring prices, this nation still lives under the shadow of its founding father. John Ray, ITV News.